Well, I'm a hairstylist and I take the opportunity for someone to be in my chair um, very serious. And so I've shared the gospel with women and men who sit in my chair every single day. And whether I'm sharing the gospel or they're looking for a church, um, I'm constantly trying to bring encouragement to those people. And many of those that have sat in my chair have found themselves here at Capitol just by simply asking them questions and talking to them and, and, and helping them to find their way here. I'm, I'm a nurse at St. Pete's and for me personally, um, it's, a, it's a daily thing. So not only sharing Jesus to the community, but um, you know, every single day I'm given the opportunity to talk to somebody um, if it's not directly about Jesus, it's at least showing them the love of God through what I can do for them. And um, I feel like it's given me a whole new outlook on life and it's given me a purpose. Well, I work with people who can sometimes be in pain, frustrated, lost in their identity because of uh, trauma in their life and circumstances that require them to change their job and that's a difficult place to be. Sometimes you lose your identity. But because of Christ, I am aware that there's something deeper in you than the job you did. There's something deeper in you than what you might have thought all the money was about. And so I try to tap into that and encourage people that who they are is still there and can still benefit them. I think that I have the opportunity to share the gospel with people regularly. Um, Maybe specifically some unique opportunities I've had have been in the workplace. And um, I work for the state. My work is really kind of focused. And so I really have an opportunity to interface with people. But what I've noticed is that people ask me things like, how do you stay so happy? Where does your joy come from? How does your family have so much peace and still be able to fit everything in during the week? And those are opportunities for me to share the gospel outside of church and to people who can truly be impacted by what God's done in my life. Well, sharing the gospel, I try to do it in my actions, in my day-to-day, everyday um, life, everyday walk. Um, being in the military, I see a lot of people going through a lot of situations and I like to sit down and share them my story about God and how He's blessed me. Um, how he's cared for me, uh, surrounded me by people um, who love him and have relationships because we're not supposed to be here and walk this road alone. We don't have to. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you back to our fourth edition of Growing. Um, we've been talking about how we grow by studying God's Word, how we grow through having a prayer life, how we grow when we live a life of devotion and worshiping. But today, I wanna to talk about how we grow through sharing Christ. One of the ways that we grow in your faith is to share it with others. But sometimes we feel intimidated by this. You know, we, we, we worry what someone will ask. Maybe they'll ask a question we can't answer or we'll get, go to door to door and be like some door-to-door uh, -door faith salesman. Uh, but really, God just simply is asking us to be his witness, share his love, and reflecting who he is with the rest of the world. Here's an important scripture that Jesus left us just before he returned to heaven. And in Matthew 28, it says this, that Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. It's an important passage of scripture because Jesus is telling us to go. 
It's a directive, it's a command, it's not a suggestion, it's not really optional. So if I wanna grow up in God, then I'm gonna to have to go and share my story. In other words, every person has a circle of influence and God wants you to take into your circle of influence, whether it's your friends, whether it's your coworkers, it's the people around you, and to share what he's done for you. Now, when you share your story, He's not asking you to be anything more than his witness. He doesn't need you to be his attorney. He doesn't need you to defend him. There may be passages of scriptures you don't understand. There are things that you don't feel you can answer. Don't let that intimidate you from sharing your story because you become the expert on your story. And to tell your story is simply, this was what was going on in my life. This is what I did. This is the difference that God has made. And when you share that, you become a person of influence because now you're sharing what God has done in your life, how God has helped you, how God has encouraged you. And now you're doing what he's asking you to do, be his witness. And what does a witness do? It tells the truth. It doesn't tell more than the truth. It doesn't tell less than the truth. It just tells the truth. And what God has done for you, truthfully tell, that story and that story only. And when you do that, you're gonna be his witness. You're gonna be his ambassador. Remember, someone shared the gospel with you. In fact, sharing the gospel is so important that the Bible refers to people who share the gospel that their feet in the eyes of God are actually beautiful. I want you to think about that for a moment. When we go walk across the room or we drive across town or we go to work, but we go, Jesus said go. Sometimes it's go to other nations, it's go to a friend. Wherever we go, when you do that, the Bible says your feet are beautiful. Remember that Jesus, before he left, got down on his hands and knees and washed the disciples' feet. That's how important this mission is to God, that we would go and share his love with people who don't yet know him. Now here's another way we can share and demonstrate God's love, and it's found in Matthew chapter five. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's powerful. I wanna encourage you this week to find ways that you can let your light shine and let your love be a manifestation by adding value to other people's lives. Find ways that you can tell your story so that you can light up someone's life, that you can light up someone's world, that you can be that witness that God wants you to be. I wanna encourage you also to take some time and share your story in your group. Get to know one another. Find out what God has done in each other's life. What was your life before you found Christ? How has God impacted your life? What did you do and the difference that it's made? Maybe you haven't come to a relationship with Christ. A great time to discuss that with your group. Here's the other thing. What, what could we do to go into the world and show the world God's love? There's so much bitterness out there. There's so much anger. So as we conclude this series about growing, I wanna encourage you, go and be the light God wants you to be and you'll grow you'll develop and you'll mature into a strong believer.